Matt, what's happening? What's going on, Rick? It's good to Not see you, man. a lot. Yeah, thanks. Good to see you, too. Yeah. Funny, we work in the same office, never see each other. Yeah, well, you could stop by and say hey every once in a while, you know? <laughs> Don't go be a jerk. Yeah, yeah, I'll try. Yeah. I'll try. <laughs> okay. So what are we talking about today, man? I'm pumped to be back on the podcast, psyched to share this info. Uh, what do you want to talk about? Well, the other day we were in the back, we were talking about trainer turnover. So I was kind of curious if you could elaborate on that and tell me what you're seeing out there. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I mean, it's definitely a great topic. I think a lot of our guys that we talk to have challenges with that. So I think we'll, the, here's the best way to describe that. So there's a concept that I came across a few years ago in one of my business coaching groups. And the concept was called rivers and ponds, right? And and basically what what we were talking about was you have one, you either have a business that resembles a river or a business that resembles a pond. So if you think about a river, right, in this, in this context, you've got someone jumps in the river, like jumps into your business, you know, and, and for a minute, and then they're going to jump back into the river and, and flow on and disappear, right? So that would be someone that's a short-term employee, right? Whereas a pond is, is the type of business structure where people come, and they jump in the pond, and they stay forever, right? And if you look at the two concepts, they each have their challenges, right? If you look at a, like a pond as an example, it's great if you get people to come and stay forever, right? Except that you have to then refresh the water every now and then and right, put more nutrients in it, right? Or it's going to get stale and stagnant, right? Whereas a river, the biggest challenge is it's always flowing by. People hop out, you know, hop into your business for a year or two, and then they're gone. And so um, in this roundtable discussion that we were having, there was a guy, a good example, just a guy on the, on the table that had a, a, like a boutique engineering firm, right? And he gets these young engineers in to his business. He has a very specific uh, niche that he works within, and guys will come just to learn from him in this niche, right? Well, he knows they're only going to stay for a year or two. And so he plans on that, right? And he plans it from the way that he onboards new employees. He's got to get them up to speed quick, right? And he knows that when they're leaving, uh, he knows they're going to be 12 to 24 months tops, and everything in his business is structured around that. So instead of someone leaving and it being a big deal, he's high-fiving them out the door, right? Because, uh, you know, he's happy and he knows that's the process and that's what he's built his business around. So if you look at parallel that with sort of like personal trainers in our business, right? Um, most of our businesses are a combination of ponds and rivers, right? So you've got your management team, maybe even you as an owner, if you're an owner operator, they're in the pond. And the pond is good because they're going to be there forever, you know, and then you can like put nutrients in there or whatever. But you got to, like we said, you got to feed the pond and you have to take care of it because sometimes old employees are just old. Doesn't mean they're better. Right. And that would include the owners as well. Right. But the part of the business that's more of a river is going to be trainers. Um, you know, if you look at uh, sort of the average stay in the industry, you know, I sat on the ACE board for a short time and it was like around 12 months, which is sad, you know, that, that that's the longest uh, someone would Seems stay in the industry. longer than I think it would be, actually. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know, it's tough. I mean, part of it is the environment that trainers get into. You know, if you came to our gym and you were on a salary with benefits, you're probably going to stick around a little longer, right? But, um, you know, if you know that inherently – there's high turnover in that position. And I think you and I both agree we'd like it to be different. But if Absolutely. we really look at it, honestly, there's probably going to be higher than normal turnover in that position. And so all the entrepreneurs that are listening in, you know, you get your business built and set up and you get this feeling like, yeah, I finally have my perfect team in place. This is going to last forever. And the fact is it doesn't, right? Um, and so people are always bemoaning the fact that the trainers, the trainer return over is really high. Well, if you know that, and statistically, we know this industry wide, it supports that, then build your business knowing that you're going to have more of a river scenario, right? With your trainers, which means have an onboarding process that's quick, gets them up to speed quickly, which speaks to business systems, sure. right? Like Before you keep going, like, tell me more about this onboarding process. I mean, what would you think you'd be doing here? Yeah. I mean, well, we could just use like what, what our best practices are, right? So we do a, a six week mentorship, right? And that, that gets them up to speed. It gives us a chance to sort of test drive them as, as good team members and them to test drive whether or not they have what it takes to be in the industry. What that allows us to do though, by thinking of it as a river is build a systematic approach to it on the back end so that when we hire people, we don't have to look for those unicorns that are technically technical, you know, programmers 
great team players, great customer service. They look the part, right? They have integrity. It's like all those things are hard to put into one unicorn package, right? Absolutely. If you find one, you're supposed to trap it, I think. We need to study yeah, that. But do not let that guy go. Hey, do not Mark let him out. go. Yeah, he's Don't a freak. <laughs> she or he is a freak. But uh, when you look at having a systematic approach, right, where you use the, the idea of hire the athlete, train the skill, then it's like, okay, I have a systematic approach on the back end to what I do. I can hire the athlete, which is someone who's great with people, looks the part, you know, will show up on time and they don't have to be a tech, technically proficient trainer. I'm going to give them a play to run, right? I just want them to go out on the floor, service the hell out of people and run the play correctly, right? It's a completely different skill set. Um, and that certainly helps in this river scenario that we're talking about, right? Sure. Well, having a system in place obviously is going to help that, but I don't think a lot of places out there have a system um, to accommodate this. So what would you uh, tell them to do? Yeah, I would say you have to start, I mean, start with the easy stuff, right? Systemize like your training itself. So when we, for those of you guys that don't know our story, you know, when we opened in 92, um, you know, we had a huge hiccup at one point, it was in 96 and we were crushing it until that point. And then we almost went out of business. And as a, as a result of that, we systemized everything that we did, right? Because we're like, hey, I'm not going to be beholden to Rockstar trainers anymore. It's my customers. I want to own the system. And so we started with the easy part, which was just the training. Like, what do you do with a new client when they come to the gym? All right. Like, are you going to, what are you going to use for an assessment tool? Right. Where do they end up in your programming and what kind of programming is most appropriate for them? If you just have that and you can have maybe take the sales play away from the trainers, right? So not selling. So you have someone in charge of sales and then you have an induction process that gets the client from the door to the right level of the product. Then the coach just comes in and runs the play, right? So for anybody out there that doesn't have system, um, I would say start with the easy part for most people listening today, which is just your training protocols, right? That's something anybody can, can fix and sure. understand. And then that will then, once you nail that, then it can lead to sales systems, how to say hello, goodbye, customer service systems, and everything else in between. Right. right. Well, I think, you know, one of the big problems out there and why trainers leave all the time is they feel lost, right? They are literally just floating downstream and all they, you know, the owners or whoever's running the show just wants them to sell and make them some money and make the clients happy. Right. And they don't care about anything else. Well, and you think about like these discussions that we've had, it's like, wow, you know, I'm gonna, I need to hire some more trainers because I'm going to make more money. I'm like, ah, oh, you might, but like, that's not the sales and all the other skills that go around running your own business aren't necessarily hardwired in these trainers. And if they're that good, they're either going to command a real premium price, right? Or they're out, they have one foot out the door. Cause if they're that talented, they probably headed out to do their own thing at some yeah, point. They're just right? going to take the, take the clients with them. Right. I mean, well, exactly. does it happen to you? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Almost ran me out of business. Right. <laughs> so again, going back to say rivers and ponds as an example, right? If you have a pond for management, like you, your wife, your you know, husband, whatever that is, like that, that's your management, then you got to work really hard to make sure those people stay fresh and up to speed, right? You should probably look at your trainers more in the river scenario. They're going to hop off at your place. They're going to stay for a few years and they're going to leave. And if you know that going in and you have a systematic approach when they leave, which is always an interesting situation, right? Cause you're like, man, if this trainer leaves, I'm screwed. I'm going to lose my customers. Everybody loves them. But if you brought them in with both of you knowing that you're in this river scenario or that they're only going to stay for a certain amount of time, then when they're leaving on their exit, you know, they knew they were exiting. They came to you for a specific purpose. You taught them how to be a great coach. You taught them program design. Hopefully you had them sign a non-solicit or non-compete, whatever your state says. And then when they leave, you should literally be high-fiving them on the way out the door because you did your part. They worked for you for a couple of years, maybe. Maybe you busted the, the average. Maybe they stayed three years, right? Um, but you have to set your – knowing that going in, knowing that there's never one perfect team that's going to last forever, certainly knowing the statistics around personal training, you better have a system set up to onboard quickly and not make it as awkward when they leave. So you don't right. lose customers and disrupt your business, right? Absolutely. So, you know, I guess a final point on that, Matt, would be when we when we look at this rivers and ponds, and this is something we adopted a while back, um, it, it's not a bad idea when you bring on a coach or a trainer to your business to have a discussion at the point of hiring them for how long they're probably gonna last in your business, right? So, you know, we obviously retain people longer than most because we pay well and we've just got a really good structure. So it's easy to plug and play. Um, I would say even in our business, if you haven't like leveled up and found other functions in the business, like ways to drive revenue 
or maybe loan yourself over to our licensing now franchising part of the business. Um, five years is probably it, right? So we sit down with a new hire. That's the discussion. Like, hey, we're going to work with you. But like, if you haven't done anything else and found other ways to produce revenue or moved into different realms of the business, five years is it. And you might have a rare, rare individual that can stay motivated doing the same thing with that sort of ceiling, right? Sure. More than five years. That's going to be really rare. So I would say have that discussion early on with your employees. Let them know, hey, five years is the max. If you are if you haven't moved anywhere within the company in five years or if I don't have anywhere to place you, I'm going to talk to some friends of mine in the industry and I'm going to try to move you into a position that, that makes more sense. But you can't be here. And when you do that, then you're congratulating them on your private Facebook page and high-fiving them, right? You're not necessarily um, saying, oh, this person left and it's really awkward because they've been here 17 years. I mean, that's just not normal. Well, it shouldn't be a negative thing anyway, right? I mean, it's everybody views it breaking up or whatever. Uh, it shouldn't be that way. And it actually should be in all the check-ins and everything should see, you know, what their new goals are because those are constantly changing and if they're any help and that just makes a better work environment. Yeah, exactly. I mean, I mean, listen, I'm, I'm here to help people grow. I mean, I had a lot of people giving me a hand up when I was in the, when I was starting out. So for me to bring on someone who's a brand new coach here, teach them the ropes, have them move on. I mean, you know, stories, we've got folks that did internships here that I got jobs with friends of mine that own gyms that now own those gyms that yeah, purchase them from those really owners. Cool. Right. So yeah, man, that's cool. But all the while knowing like that's my end game because I understand this rivers and ponds scenario. So I'm not rubbed the wrong way or I'm not butt hurt when I have somebody that leaves. I know they're leaving the day they start with me, right? And yeah. they know that as well. And so that takes all that tension away, allows us both to work towards a common goal. And in the interim, I get really good work out of someone, a really focused amount of work because we know there's a finite time limit to that. And if they could stay on the team and do something else, great. If not, then I'll help them find something else that they want. You know, sure. I really will. Well, that's absolutely good advice. I mean, there's not many places that fortunate to be franchising out and there's lots of other responsibilities and things pop up. You, if you're just solely a gym, I mean, it's you're going to get a little stagnant there if you're there for five plus years. So yeah. you gotta I'll tell a, you that. And you know, you've seen this as well. And certainly some of our listeners understand that just because someone's been there for a long time doesn't mean they're good. And sometimes that really works against you. You know, you've got this old school trainer who's out there, you know, maybe doesn't like adopt any new ideas. You know, they're cutting corners. They're just, they just don't have the juice. And I mean, I, I hell, you did it. I, I coached for 10 years from 6 a.m. to 9 p.m. You did it when you started here. Um, it's not an easy thing to do, you know, no. it's, it's easy to show up, right? Like, okay, level one, just show up to work. Great. But to do that, to, to level up to level two or whatever that is, you know, which means show up and do it with a smile and conviction and energy every single day, that takes some juice and right. it, it takes some real concentration. I think we underestimate how hard that can be. Um, I don't think somebody can maintain that juice as a full-time coach for more than five years unless they're in their own business or doing it solely for their own sure. benefit. So yeah, just makes my, sense. Absolutely. Yeah. So that's it, man. Rivers and ponds. Listen, guys, um, I highly suggest you look at your business through that lens. I hope that helps and uh, we'll see you guys next time. All right. Thank you.